Hello, I'm Laura McHarry at The Hidden Edge with another tea break tip on how to use business models and tools to help you manage your growing business. Today we're looking at how to use action-centered leadership, sometimes known as ACL. It's a model that was first published in 1973 by leadership expert John Adair. And it's really useful to illustrate the need to balance task outcomes with team cohesiveness and individual development. So let's have a look at the model. Just bring up the screen share. Action centered leadership highlights the key actions that leaders have to take when managing performance. It is particularly helpful because it groups these responsibilities under three key areas achieving the task, building the team and developing individuals. The model states that leaders must balance the actions they take across all three key areas if they want peak performance. The thing is, the areas are interdependent and if a leader focuses too much on one area and neglects the other two, then he or she will experience problems. So if too much attention is paid to the task, then the team and individuals will suffer to some degree. If too much attention is paid to the team, then the task and individuals will suffer to some degree. And if too much attention is paid to the individuals, then the task and team will suffer. The key, of course, is that balance. There will be times when due to external influences, it will be important to focus in on just one of the circles. For example, when a deadline looms, the focus on the task may become urgent and important. If the team is new, then management may need to attend to Tuckman's forming, storming, norming and performing stages of group development. When an individual has been delegated a new task or role, he or she may need close direction and coaching in order to build the skills required. There will, of course, always be times when the need of the individual team and task clash. Your priority is what is best for the business in terms of its vision and its values. If the clash is between the needs of the individual and the team, then you might base your decision on what is best for the team. There are and will always be exceptions to those rules, of course. Any change in focus needs to be short term in order to affect change and revert to a balance and back to peak performance. Let's look at how you prepare for your manager's role and recognising the need for action in all three areas and how you can use the action-centred leadership model to aid communication. The actions that are important from a communication perspective under achieving the task is the purpose and aims of your business, the plans and the policies that you are creating, the progress and the prospects that that might deliver. For the team, it's the structure and deployment, the emotional intelligence and the ethos and values in relation to the business. And for individuals, the pay and conditions are important, the safety, the health and the welfare, and of course, personal education and training. So let's look at how you prepare for the annual appraisal as an example of the information, ideas and knowledge in your business and how it ties into the three circles and what's in it for the recipient. In this template, we can start to think about specifically the overall position of the business and how it relates to the individual and how we might communicate that. Purpose, aims and objectives. The core purpose, 
the key aims and the more tangible objectives are central in communication. The purpose answers why, why we are doing this. Plans and policies, planning answers to the questions what, when, how, where and why. They're questions that we all ask and if we know what the answers are, it makes it easier to communicate. Progress and prospects. Progress motivates. Prospects motivates even more. For example, new products, other innovations, positive changes in the pipeline. It adds excitement. Structure and deployment. Any changes in structure and deployment, any organisational changes or alter alterations will affect the team. It's useful to let people know what's going on and how the team might adapt. Ways to improve teamwork. Emotional intelligence. Anything that results in better team working so that the various parts work in an integrated and harmonious whole. Ethos and values. This is the organisation steer by the form of its corporate values and its spirit as opposed to its form. For the individuals, paying conditions, anything that affects remuneration, conditions of work or personal prospects for employment of individuals is important to discuss. Health, safety and welfare. Information that affects safety or security. Education and training. Whatever may contribute to personal development, present competence and future capability of each in, 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 I'll try that again, each individual, a really important aspect of the engagement review. Quite often that's the area that's focused on, but actually the annual appraisal is a fantastic opportunity to talk about everything that's going on in the business. To keep people engaged in the business you need to consider what and how you are communicating, the actions that are needed and this template gives you an opportunity to cover all of that, give some consideration to it and cover it in an annual appraisal or any communications that you might have, it could be a performance related uh, um, discussion. So there you have a simple explanation of how to use action-centred leadership. You can get the uh, template from the Hidden Edge website, please do. Please also share your stories there too. I, um, I'm, I'm looking for business case studies from small businesses and uh, would love to hear anything that has worked particularly well for you to build into my case studies. So that's it from me on action-centered leadership. Until next time, happy tea break.